In this video, we're going to be looking at the secret history of Meghan Markle. Stay tuned to discover whether her decision to step back from royal life was due to a fallout with other members of the monarchy and the little known role she played in international politics even before she married Prince Harry. So just who is Meghan Markle? Let's take a look into her family life. Born Rachel Meghan Markle on August 4th, 1981 in California. Yep, you heard that right. Her real first name is Rachel. She's known as Meghan because her parents called her that since birth. Her African-American mum, Doria, works as a clinical therapist and yoga instructor. And her father, Thomas, a Dutch-Irish television lighting director, worked on the 80s sitcom Married With Children. Maybe this is where the future actress was inspired as he used to take her on set. However, her parents divorced when she was six years old and though she did see her father occasionally, they were never close and he never actually walked her down the aisle. In fairness, he did suffer a heart attack leading up to the event, meaning he couldn't travel. But still, would you miss a royal wedding? She also has two estranged half-siblings from her father's prior marriage, Samantha and Thomas Jr., who were never really part of her life growing up. And judging by the tabloids, it's gonna continue that way. It all makes sense that Meghan got into acting since she grew up in LA and spent time on set with her father, but she's on record as saying she never wanted to be the cliche girl from LA that became an actress, which is why she double majored in theater and international relations. Mike Ross? Hi, I'm Rachel Zane, I'll be giving you your orientation. Although we know her for a role as a paralegal Rachel Zane, which she played for seven seasons on the US legal drama Suits, and where she spent eight months of the year filming and living in Vancouver, Canada, this wasn't her first acting role. No, no, no. She started out with a small role as a nurse on the famous daytime soap opera General Hospital before landing the big gig. Good for her. The role on Suits earned her a mere $50,000 an episode. Not bad going, right? As you know, Meghan studied international relations, but why? Well, she's always loved politics and thought it would be a good backup plan, so during her junior college, she took an internship at the US Embassy in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Not a bad move, Meghan, especially now that she has to deal with the Queen. She knows how to write too, the fancy way. She learned how to do calligraphy while studying in LA and it paid off later. She says, when I was auditioning at the onset, instead of waiting tables, I did calligraphy, making wedding invites and birthday cakes and hosting workshops at the small paper shop in Beverly Hills. And before she landed her first acting gigs, while she was still auditioning for work, believe it or not, Megan used to be a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal. Her job was to open her briefcase when picked by contestants and she didn't enjoy the work. She says, I would end up standing up there forever in these terribly uncomfortable and inexpensive five inch heels, just waiting for someone to pick my number so I could go and sit down. In 2014, she started a lifestyle website called The Tig. The name The Tig comes from a wine called Tignanello, but oftentimes it's mispronounced Tignanello. Where she wrote about food, fashion, beauty, travel, and inspirational women. She brought in experts such as dietitians, makeup artists, fitness and yoga instructors, and the website grew, reaching 3 million followers on Instagram, 800,000 on Facebook, and 350,000 on Twitter, thanks to her Suits fans. She closed the site in 2017 and deleted the social media accounts in 2018. We wonder why. She's written about fashion on her website. She knows a thing or two about fashion, judging by her own personal style. And she was named 2019's most powerful fashion icon, according to the global search platform Lists Year in Fashion Report. So I think that means we can trust her when it comes to clothes and accessories. That being said, on suits, she would insist on wearing her own jewellery, including family heirlooms, and she even released two collections for the Canadian high street fashion retailer Reitmans in 2015 and 2016. And if you think her hair is amazing and you wonder how she does it, the answer? She does keratin treatments to get those locks of her straight. Did you know this is actually her second marriage? She married LA production manager Trevor Engelson in Jamaica after dating him for seven years in 2011. However, two years later, it was all over. Following her divorce, she was spotted dating the Northern Irish golfer Rory McIlroy, then Canadian chef Corey Vitello. And she nearly got together with the British X Factor bad boy Matt Cardle, who, if you've not yet seen our video, will include a link in the description for you to check that out. She clearly had a thing for Brits, and she bagged Prince Harry following a blind date where she was set up by a mutual friend in London. Who says love is blind? 
The loved up couple had been dating for a little over a year before they announced they'd marry on November 27th, 2017. That was quick. In honour of their engagement, Harry gave Meghan a bespoke engagement ring with a central diamond from Botswana and two smaller diamonds either side from his mother's jewellery collection. He's a sentimental guy, our Harry, and it was made by royal jewellers Cleve and Company and is said to be worth $350,000. Someone's a lucky girl. Their wedding took place on May the 19th, 2018 at Windsor Castle and it was a royal affair indeed. Luckily for them, the royal family picked up the bill because it was expensive, estimated at a whopping 32 million pounds. Yes, every girl needs a cake worth 50,000 pounds, flowers at a cost of 110,000 pounds, and the finest foods provided by the top caterers at a mere 286,000 pounds. Only the best will do, right? Of course, every bride wants to look their best on their wedding day, and Meghan was no different. Her dress was made by British designer Claire Waite Keller, the artistic director at the luxury brand Givenchy. The dress also had a patriotic touch. It consisted of 55 embroidered flowers that represented the 53 Commonwealth countries, with the remaining two flowers symbolising the couple's union, one for him and one for her. It's every girl's dream to become a real-life princess, and Meghan practically did it. Okay, well, she's a duchess, not a princess, but same, same. In fact, she was the first woman to hold the title Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex. This new royal life took them from living in Nottingham Cottage in London on the grounds of Kensington Palace to Frogmore Cottage on the grounds of Windsor Castle. So yes, in a way, she kind of was living in a castle. And the Crown Estate kindly renovated the palace before the couple moved in, paying a hefty £2.4 million, which controversially came from taxpayer money. Though, in fairness, the couple did pay for the furnishings out of their own pocket. So, we're all interested in knowing, what's Meghan's net worth? Well, on her own, Meghan has a net worth of around $5 million, while her husband is worth about $25 million, made up of inheritance from his annual allowance, making the couple's total net worth $30 million, roughly £23 million. But, here's the thing. After stepping down from their royal duties, they gave up their titles and state funding, meaning they no longer receive money from the royal family. Is it worth it, you ask? Time will tell. However, father-in-law Prince Charles manages a private fund under the name Duchy of Cornwall, and they will continue to receive $2.5 million a year, so don't feel too bad for them. It's also widely reported that they didn't get a prenup before marriage because prenups aren't very popular or common in the UK, so instead they merged their finances. Should they ever divorce, Meghan will be entitled to Harry's personal fortune, but anything that comes from the Queen, like residences for example, doesn't belong to Harry, so that wouldn't be part of any divorce settlement. The couple shocked the world when they announced they were giving up their royal titles. Well, technically they'll still hold their royal titles, but they won't be using them. And why? Well, it was to become financially independent. Now, do we believe that? Well, there's been a lot of rumours about tensions and fallouts with other members of the royal family, but the truth is, we'll probably never know the full story. What we do know is, even after giving up their royal duties, they won't be cut off from the royal family entirely. They plan to divide their time between the UK so their son, Master Archie, can have appreciation for the royal tradition as well as Canada so they can have a space to focus on their new chapter. All the while, they continue to honour and collaborate with the Queen, the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Cambridge, the Commonwealth and all other relevant parties. So what are your thoughts? Have Meghan and Harry made the right decision stepping back from real life? Don't forget, if you haven't watched our video about X Factor bad boy Matt Cardle, who Meghan tried to hook up with, we'll include a link here, or you might prefer one of our other videos. Thank you for watching, catch you on the next video.